Hello, and thank you for joining us. This is No Sound Bites Allowed, and I am your host, Michael Voss, Dragon of the Southern Tier. I'm happy to be here with you today, as we're going to address an issue that you probably haven't noticed. In fact, I believe the local and major news media have done their very best to make sure that you wouldn't notice this problem, that it would just pass you by, that you wouldn't pay attention to this because if you did, you'd be very upset because there's a problem, a long running problem that is affecting hundreds of thousands, if not millions of lives of Americans every single day. And we're going to talk a little bit about it and an example of what we mean. But before we do that, we do want to mention that if this is the first time that you are seeing our channel, we want to thank you and we welcome you. We do long form political commentary on this channel. And every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we do a live stream with you. We go on to YouTube, Facebook, DLive, Twitter, and all of the access, the social media that the internet overlords will allow us to, to reach out to you, to get your tweets, your chats, and your phone calls, to hear from you and hear your voice on the issues that are affecting us all. And we do so for everyone in the world because we believe in free speech. No matter what country you're with, no matter what your government may believe, no matter what the internet overlords believe, we believe in your ability, your inalienable right to speak. So every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we ask you to join us and to share your voice on the issues that matter to us all. We hope to see you. Now, as for the issue today, well, it's a big issue and it has a lot to it. Now, I know over the last, well, actually not just the last several days, but for this entire week so far, I think most people in America have been tied up and paying attention to Andrew Cuomo, kind of like Joe Biden. Although I don't think most people in America have the same feeling that Joe Biden did, thinking that Cuomo did a hell of a job as governor, which many people would happen to dispute, kind of like Janice Dean, a blue check, a New York Times bestselling author, who happened to say, hi, Joe Biden, happy to fill you in on the 9,000 COVID patients Andrew Cuomo piled into nursing homes and then covered up the numbers to sign his $5.1 million book deal. Also, VIP COVID tests for his buddies while nursing homes couldn't get any. One hell of a guy. One hell of a job. Isn't that interesting? See, Joe Biden is out of touch. Janice Dean seems more along the lines of where most Americans are, even though a large amount of this story is being obfuscated because as much as we're hearing Democrats argue and complain about the Me Too moment after several months of not saying a word, now they're getting on the bandwagon to say Mr. Cuomo, need, it's good that he's resigned, although they're leaving out the fact that Mr. Cuomo actually needs to be prosecuted and if guilty should go to jail because they're worried about the $18 million, actually $18.5 million, as we've covered before on this channel, that Mr. Cuomo has control over for re-election funds. So he is able, if he doesn't go to jail, to continue to manipulate New York politics with Democrats because of the money he's able to give to these Democrats to win their re-elections. And that is troubling. But as this news has come out, there has been other things that have, been come, have not been coming out in the news that have been completely hidden from the public. We'll give you an example. This is WSKG. And on August 9th, they came out with this article. Binghamton City Council President alleges harassment stemming from city council meetings. Now, the big thing about this is this was put out 9.20 p.m., when no one would notice the story, when, mo when many people are going to sleep, when people aren't paying attention to the news for the most part. 
And the story goes, Binghamton City Council President alleges harassment. That, that she's making an allegation that involved an individual by the name of Tariq Abdelazim. This is someone we have investigated on this channel before. It is someone we have spoken to for many years in uh, politics. We've been following and speaking him, with him since at least 2012. Mr. Abdelazim, as is noted in the article, is a former Binghamton mayoral candidate as well as being a former Broome County um, County executive candidate as well. And it's, a, it's alleged that Mr. Abdelazim used foul language, vulgar language, to address the Binghamton City Council President, Sophia Rezanetti, as she was doing her job in July of 2021. In addition, it is alleged that Mr. Abdel Abdelazim threatened Ms. Rezanetti. And you may see, uh, Ms. Rezanetti states that while I respect everyone's, every person's right to free speech, many lines were crossed at recent city council meeting. We cannot tolerate harassment, intimidation, and threats at any level, but especially if they are threats to us personally, to our homes and families, when those lines are crossed, people must be held accountable. That is a serious allegation. In intimidation, harassment, and threats. You know who does that all the time? BLM, Antifa, Progressive Leaders of Tomorrow, the progressive socialist, democratic socialist, far left. This is their modus operandi. In fact, we saw that throughout all of 2020. That is exactly what they did to everyone. Anyone who disagreed with them, anyone who was listening to them, that's how they had their message heard. They're mostly peaceful riots that resulted in arsons and the murder of several dozen human beings. Now, to be fair, Mr. Abdelazim, for his part, says the complaint by City Council President Sophia Rezanetti is factually inaccurate, legally without merit, and is, troubling and is a troubling attempt to intimidate me and others into silence. I will be contesting this charge and defending my First Amendment rights, and I am confident both the charges and the temporary order of protection will be quickly dismissed. This will be something that will be before judges on August 20th. Now, something that's not really addressed in this, in this article, it states that there is a second degree harassment and a formal complaint. It leaves out the fact that Mr. Abdelazim was in fact arrested. And as you can see from this article from, from WBNG, Former Binghamton Director of Housing arraigned for allegedly harassing Binghamton City Council President. Do you notice the difference in the wording? Do you notice the difference when we go from a far left news media source to a relatively neutral news media source? There is a toning down with WSKG. They're minimizing the situation. They're trying to make it seem like it's not that big a deal as opposed to the factual information coming out of WBNG that this is a far more serious matter. And again, and WBNG did a little bit more homework in citing that Mr. Tariq Abdelazim is a former city of Binghamton planning director, as well as the former democratic mayoral candidate. And we also mention again that he was also the former Broome County County Executive candidate in 2012, where he lost that race as well. And going on, WBNG provides information about what was actually happening at this July meeting, that there was a discussion about federal spending that was available, uh, federal stimulus money that was looking to be spent and the city council was addressing several issues on items that could be uh, where that money could be spent. And Mr. Abdelazim, as well as other agents of the BLM, Progressive Leaders of Tomorrow, and Socialist, uh, Socialist Progressive Movement in the Southern Tier, were 
screaming about racism because they weren't getting their way. The money wasn't being spent on what they wanted, regardless of what the community may or may not want. Because racism is always the answer. It's always their answer to every issue. Let's take a moment to understand. Who is Tariq Abdelazim? It's actually a question we asked back in 2017. And that was because he was running for mayor. Mr. Abdelazim is a far left individual who in 2012 ran for the county executive position and lost by, uh, by two thirds vote. In addition, Mr. Abdelazim gained the opportunity to run for the mayor, the city of Binghamton mayor, because of a bait and switch tactic run by the Broome County Democratic Party. At that time, Chairman Tim Grippen put his name on petitions to say that he was going to run. In fact, he took the position as a placeholder to be able to get signatures. And once enough signatures were uh, received, they then put Mr. Abdelazim's name on the ticket so that he could run because presumably he would not be able to get signatures from Democrats because they had no interest in him being their candidate. Because in 2012 and in 2017, Democratic Socialists and progressives were not what the Democratic Party believed in, even in New York State. And so this is a little bit about who Mr. Abdelzine is. But there's more to understand in this issue. And we want to make sure that we make it very clear about who and what are involved here. You see, this is a big deal because Sophia Rezzanetti, back in March, was threatened. Matter of fact, uh, the article's here. Again, coming from WBNG, we see that the Binghamton City Council president had to speak out after there was a protest at her home that after a Monday night hearing meeting of the city council, she was met at her home by a group of protesters. The kids came up to her and said, Mom, people are outside screaming. What is going on? It's because, uh, once again, the democratic socialists, the progressives, did not get what they wanted in the city council meeting. And so they, resulted, they resorted to the same thing that we saw in 2020. They had protests. They went to people's homes and intimidated their children, their families, their workplaces. They tried to disrupt people's lives and tried to intimidate them with the force of their, of their movement, their mob, trying to get what they wanted, regardless of whether that was in the best interest of the community or not, whether or not the community agreed with them or not. It was their will. And they were willing to intimidate and to aggressively uh, confront individuals in their homes. You can understand why a, a councilwoman Resinetti was very concerned. And you can understand why, in looking at the character of Mr. Uh, Abdelazine, you may have some questions about him and his willingness to do whatever it takes to gain power. But here's something that's really important. In looking at these stories from August 9th and August 10th, respectively, we're not really seeing what happened. See, this was a, an event, the city council, just like your city council. And it's probably taped. It's probably live. We have a photo here which looks like it came from a video, a captured screen, but there is no link to the video. There is no evidence for the public. So you have to wonder what actually happened. And again, even with WBNG, we don't see the actual event. Well, actually, we found the event. And we, doing our research, mind you, we're not a huge company owned by a multinational news agency. 
We're, we don't have dozens of employees with millions of dollars in funding. We were able to find evidence of that night and we are going to be able to present it to you. So first, let us start off with the fact that in this evidence, part of the source of this evidence is from Mr. Thomas Gray. Okay, Mr. Thomas Gray is a supporter of BLM. And you may say, well, Mike, how can you possibly say that? Here is evidence from Press Connects itself. In an article from June 2nd of 2020, um, Binghamton protest draws hundreds for a peaceful event at Cherry Lindsay Park and moves to the police station. In this event, we see that they quote, a man who identified himself as Thomas Gray began his address with a moment of silence. In our communities, I've seen police come out and stand in solidarity with community members. And on Sunday, I saw them do crowd control. They didn't come out, they didn't stand with us, they didn't say, what do you need, yet, still yet to hear anything possibly because the police were doing their job, which is not to be political nor to take sides, but to make sure that protesters are safe, to make sure that the public is safe. That's their job. Their job isn't to take a political side nor to join a political faction during a protest, something that Mr. Gray willfully probably doesn't know, and that's because he is a progressive socialist, we would believe, and definitely is someone who supports BLM and progressive leaders of tomorrow, otherwise known as PLOT. And that is the picture of Mr. Thomas Gray, who is the individual who takes the video that we spoke about. Mr. Gray is also the individual who attacked a 70-year-old man. That's right. We, that was back on June 8th. Mr. Gray attacked a 70-year-old man, John Solak, and took his property, a cell phone. In fact, uh, even Democrats were upset by this. Speaking about this, we see that, um, that Mr. Solak was assaulted by members of Binghamton Progressive Leaders of Tomorrow and other far-left agencies and their supporters, including Thomas Gray, as identified by uh, Mr. Will Houston on July 26th. And we know that this is something that's very important because we spoke about this back when on June 9th, when we addressed the attack of an elderly man, a 70 year old man, and the fact that Councilwoman Angela Riley actually defended the attack and defended the attacker, Mr. Thomas Gray. And we also provided video and went over the video evidence of this attack. Yo, who are you? I'm John. You're John? Hey, what are you doing? You're John? Hold on, hold on, hold on. We got John right here? You missed my back. We got John, he's a racist. Hey, this guy's a racist. That is Mr. Thomas Gray. As he was assaulting a 70-year-old male and took his property so that he could then make accusations, baseless accusations, against Mr. John Solak. Now, for full disclosure, Yes, we know John Solak. Yes, we know Tariq Abdelazim. We've spoken with him many times. We've heard of and I believe received texts from Mr. Thomas Gray. Um, Mr. Gray and Mr. Abdelazim don't agree with us. We want, we're saying this and we're bringing this up very simply for the fact that we want you to understand when we are showing you this video, which we were able to find and research, which it seems the news media did not do, we, we went to the far left and used their evidence, the information that they use amongst each other to celebrate their actions of intimidation and violence. And so we want you to see this is what they recorded about this event with Tariq Abdelazim. How, how do you allow this? This is why I left because you're so incompetent. You have people who actually care about the community and you don't even do anything for the community. And you sit in your cozy positions. You sit in your cozy positions. 700,000 to increase public participation and you're shutting us out of that conversation.
police on the phone. That kind of says it all right there. Mr. No, again, I want you to be very, very clear about this because it was Mr. Abdelazine who said in his statement that it is factually inaccurate that there was any threats or intimidation, that it's legally without merit. Well, that's not exactly what we saw, I believe, that it's troubling that others are trying to intimidate him. You just saw Mr. Abdelazine approaching, aggressively approaching city, uh, city council members. He's assaulting them with offensive language, vulgar offensive language. And he's threatening them. It's a very threatening manner in which he's speaking to them. And he then, as we see at the end of the video, it seems that at some point he actually touched these women in a manner very much like what we see was from Joe Biden. Uh, excuse me. I was thinking of Tara Reid for a second. Uh, excuse me. Like Andrew Cuomo. That Mr. Abdelazine did exactly what Andrew Cuomo did. He touched women inappropriately. And that he knows better. We played that over and we emphasized that sound so you could hear it as clearly as we could hear it. That Mr. Abdelazine did something very wrong. And under the mean two principles of the Democratic Party, Mr. Abdelazine committed a crime. Under that point of view from progressives. So to say that it's not factually accurate that Mr. Abdelazine was threatening when he touched women inappropriately, as the video shows that and was alleged and to say that it's legally without merit that women may have been harassed and that he was confrontational and an aggressor and was uh, hurling obscenities at a public council meeting, which is not covered by the First Amendment, as best as we understand, we're not lawyers. We find Mr. Abdelazine's pleadings to be well, just pleadings. He's counting on the fact that the media is not showing the public what we were able to find. The evidence that we were able to find from the left, and we will have the links in the description so you can go and see it for yourself unless Mr. Thomas Gray has removed it, but you can see it for yourself from several angles. And we can see there is a problem there. 
Now, I say all of that, and I use this example for a very clear reason. This is happening in your community. This is happening very likely in your city council, in your county uh, executives, your legislatures, your assemblies. We are seeing individuals who spent all of 2020 using intimidation tactics, arsons, the mostly peaceful riots, the destruction of property and buildings, and the murder of a couple of dozen individuals, including David Dorn, Jessica Dottie Whitaker, children in Atlanta, children at the Seattle Chaz, and creating autonomous zones, which by definition are treasonous. We're seeing those same tactics being matched by these progressives who are asking to defund our cities and, uh, excuse me, defund our police departments and leaving us defenseless in our cities. We're seeing them try to get rid of our Second Amendment rights and they're continuing to use these tactics. And then they have bail reform to release them from jail if the DA even allows the case to go forward which we've seen in New York City in particular, over 3,000 cases were just waved away. We've seen individuals like Masai Andrews, who was arrested for second degree rioting in Rochester, New York, and the, cha and the charges were just dropped because that's what Mayor Lovely wanted before she got into her problems with drugs being distributed in her household by her husband. Over and over again, we are seeing in democratic cities across the country, democratic leadership of states and cities and towns are being co-opted by the far left over and over again. These democratic socialists, these progressives who have been around for more than a decade and who have been trying to get to this same point now have reached the point where they don't have to hide what they believe anymore. They don't have to be nice anymore. And they're not trying to be nice. They're being vulgar. They're being aggressive. They're attacking. And when they get caught attacking, when someone fights back, well, then it's your fault. You're the problem. You're stopping my free speech. You're being mean. You're, this is frivolous. How dare you? How dare you try and defend yourself from the attacks that they are making? See, this is the problem that you're saying. Our news media is more than willing, as we can see with WSKG, they're more than willing to try and tone down the story, try and make it innocuous, to make it so that you wouldn't pay attention to what's going on, to try and make it sound as harmless as possible, and to take away the consequences of what's actually happening. And at the same time, we're seeing the progressives use the tactics of intimidation, harassment, violence, aggression, to try and get their will done. It's their way or the highway. What is the saying that they love to say? What was the saying that was going on at the protest that Mr. Thomas Gray was at? No justice, no peace, they'll burn it down. No justice, no peace. If you, if you believe that po all police are not racist, then you are the problem. You are the issue. They're coming after you. And they're no longer hiding it. They're no longer being nice about it. They're no longer having conversations. Now they're coming to your face. And they're touching you. And they're aggressing on you. And when you defend yourself, well then you're the problem. This is a problem across America. This is a problem that's affecting every community to some degree. And we need to stop that. We need, and we call for, the major and local news media to honestly do their job. If we were able to find this evidence, the news media could find this evidence. They should have reported it. They should have presented it to the public. When Mr. Abdelazine said he did nothing wrong and that this is farcical, they should have shown this video and said, make up your own mind. And we hope that the police 
are looking at this evidence as well and are taking into account that Mr. Abdelazine apparently, as was alleged, was touching women in a way he knew he should not, in a way that he knew better than doing, and he did it anyway. You can think whatever you want. I'm not telling you not to be a progressive or a socialist. I'm not telling you to be far left. I'm not telling you how you should vote. But I am telling you that there is a problem in America when our news media isn't reporting the news properly, when they're not doing their research properly, that they are trying to tone down what is happening and the consequences of what is happening. And it is empowering some of the most radical parts of our of our society. Individuals who are more than happy to use intimidation, harassment, and threats, and the, and the threat of physical violence. These individuals are the problem. And they get away with it when our news media and our politicians don't call them out. And when they do, we have to support them. We look forward to seeing what you have to say about this. Is this happening in your community? Have you seen the far left use the tactics of intimidation to try and get their will, regardless of what the community wants? Is your community under siege from the far left? Or do you think the far left is right? Please, we'd like to hear what you have to say. And we hope to hear you also on Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We thank you for joining us to be here with us through this. We hope you like and share. And most of all, please do subscribe so we can spread this to more people and to have more people comment as well. We thank you and you have a great day.